I'm Jim Bright. I'm an organisational psychologist who specialises in career development. Um, I've been working as a consultant and as an academic for about 20 years. Um, I started off working in areas of learning and then moved into areas of occupational stress and then started specialising in career development kinds of issues and I publish on that and I'm the co-author of a thing called the Chaos Theory of Careers. Well Chaos Theory obviously is not ours, the Chaos Theory is something that came out of areas like evolutionary biology and meteorology and mathematics um, and most famously I suppose um, Edward Lorenz is seen as the founding, founding father of it. He was a, a meteorologist trying to predict the weather and his famous discovery was that uh, he tried to replicate one of his studies and on the second run he got a completely different pattern coming out of this equation and he didn't know why and to cut a long story short he discovered he'd made a tiny tiny error in the input values to start off this equation on the second occasion mm -hmm. and this led to a radically different output and really what it means is like the weather we might be able to predict what's going to happen tomorrow and the day after but as the time horizon moves out to weeks or months or years then it becomes almost next to impossible to make predictions now that kind of idea really resonated with me when you think about careers because that question where are you going to be in five years time is so commonly asked in recruitment and commonly asked in performance reviews and career conversations but the issue is we don't know where we're going to be in five years I don't know where I'll be at the end of this sentence let alone in five years time and consequently we thought well yeah, there's some similarities here between what happens to people's careers and kind of what happens with the weather. So maybe some of these ideas in chaos theory could be applied usefully um, to career development kinds of ideas. And in essence, I suppose, what we're trying to say is we want to move away from this kind of predict and control attitude with an overemphasis and um, a sort of too much faith in a plan, fixed plan, done once, and assuming that that somehow will play out in somebody's life. Rather, we think what we need to do is equip people to continually reinvent themselves, to be able to deal with the changes that they're going to face, the unanticipated events that will occur in their lives, to take advantage of opportunities when they present themselves, and they usually present themselves in unanticipated ways, and also to be able to sort of um, get back from the setbacks that they suffer, so to develop resilience in the face of the, the negative unplanned events that will happen as well. Yeah, I mean, I think the, 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 the foundational ideas in the chaos theory of careers are change, chance, and complexity. There's a complexity of influences. If you think about for a second about what has influenced your life to date in your career, your parents, very likely, where you were brought up, the friends you grew up with, your brothers and sisters, particular teachers at school, possibly the economic climate while you were growing up, the jobs that became available, the political climate, maybe the climate if it were in a flood or drought or some kind of event like that, your health, your financial status, and on and on and on it goes. And we could spend hours trying to list out all of these things. All of these things can and do influence your career in all kinds of subtle ways. And trying to work out all the interactions of those things is just beyond impossible, which means we can't predict. So there's complexity of influences. Then it gets even worse or harder because all of those influences are changing all of the time at different rates. Some of them dramatically, some of them glacially, but they're changing. So consequently, that just makes the whole thing a whole degree harder to uh, use to predict and control. The traditional theories have tended to say, okay, let's boil you down to a couple of personality traits or some interest categories. We'll label you with a code and then we'll look up a code in a book and say, okay, the people like this tend to do jobs like this. So it's a very static matching kind of approach. And there's now plenty of research around the world suggesting that that does not really predict very much in the way of meaningful outcomes. That people doing jobs that exactly match their interests do not appear to be any better adjusted, satisfied or successful than people doing exactly the same job where there is no interest match. So consequently, we need to go beyond simple matching if we're going to do effective things in career development. It's not that matching doesn't play any role, but it doesn't play a sufficient role to give us everything that we need to make good decisions for our individual clients. We've got to emphasise change more. And one aspect of change we have to emphasise more is uncertain change or chance events. 
Now, in the research that we've done, and the research that my friend John Krumboltz has done, we found that between about 80% to about 100% of people report that chance events have significantly altered their career. So consequently, about the only thing we can be sure of is uncertainty. What are we doing to prepare people for uncertainty? Well, some people say, well, what dumb, dumb question. How can, it's uncertain. How can you prepare people for the uncertain? But that's a very typical fatalistic response to that fact. And that's not what we want to see. It's no point telling people the world's uncertain, so let's just sort of lay back and let it wash over us. Because it turns out you can make your own luck. It turns out there are things you can do to increase your chances of the right thing happening. Some of those things we automatically recommend people do, and, the, and one most potent one of those is networking. Because humans are these gloriously unpredictable things, the more we hang out with them, the more we can increase our chances of hearing about left field opportunities, being told about getting the inside kind of line on something, getting to understand a situation which might help us pitch to a client or to a board, which is going to increase our chances, or hearing about you know the trains coming down the track so we can jump off. That is so important because what we're really doing in networking is capitalizing on the unpredictable. So there's a whole range of different things that you can do in that field. So change is something at the heart of the chaos theory approach. And in fact, I think we are, we are duty bound to encourage the people we work with to be able to embrace change, understand change, thrive and survive on change. So I think that's the theory that we've developed is a theory for today and the future. And it builds on the traditional theories, but goes way beyond that kind of approach. They may have been a good thing in the past, but they're not sufficient now. In terms of working with the students, I think it's a case of running um, coaching sessions and workshops and educational events which encourage people to think about change. It's about encouraging and giving tools to students to look at their lives in terms of more complex patterns rather than looking through a simplistic lens of a personality uh, type or um, an interest category. So one way of doing that is um, looking at their stories and narrative. And then there, encouraging students not to think about their story, singular, but their multiple stories and their multiple storied history. Because the more stories we can tell about ourselves, the more flexible our thinking, the more different perspectives we can take on ourselves, and the more different perspectives we can take on ourselves and our circumstances, the more possibilities that we can see and the greater the chance we can solve the personal problems that confront us. So that's the kind of approach that I'll be taking. And because this is in the careers area, those stories will be re related to occupation, to careers, to training, and to transition. So that will become the focus. But of course, the story allows us to bring in the context of those people's lives, which play a part out. So if the people are um, thinking they need to take into consideration their parents' wishes or desires, or they've got some concerns around um, keeping up with their peer groups or their friends, or they've got interests around maintaining their sporting career along with some other things, all of that has to be taken into account as well. And that can be captured far better using a narrative kind of approach. The other thing I'll be looking at will be developing uh, personal creativity. We have a model called Beyond Personal Mastery, which gives people a framework for the things you need to work on to develop those sorts of skills. So creative thinking skills, as applied to the career development kind of area, planful, uh, planfulness skills, teaching people how to deploy plans, develop them, put them on ice, and so forth, as I've said before. Those sorts of skills, I think, are incredibly important. That can play out in all kinds of ways. This all sounds a bit abstract, but that can play out even in something as straightforward, apparently, as a resume. By getting people to understand multiple different stories of themselves, they can produce multiple resumes that tell different stories which increase the fit between them and particular employer um, needs, if you will. So consequently, that becomes a much better sell. Good marketers and advertisers now have a good story to tell that motivates and makes the product seem absolutely ideal for your circumstances. They understand the power of narrative. In a very fundamental way, we know people remember stories. They don't remember facts and figures. They don't remember key buzzwords. You go in, into an interview and tell a story about yourself that is relevant and increases the fit between you and the job. 
At the end of the day, that interview panel who's had a sea of humanity coming before them, all begging and pleading for that role, will remember you because they'll remember those stories. So there's a lot of um, value in the narrative kind of approach. That's one thing. The creativity side of it is another thing. Emphasising change, chance, uncertainty, complexity is another aspect of this work. So I think we need to put more emphasis into teaching those skills so we end up with a much more ambitious agenda, which is not simply moving this person from where they are now to their next position, but to give them the skills so they can reinvent themselves continually throughout life. And I believe that will lead to much greater personal success and life satisfaction if they're able to do that kind of thing. Thank you.